As a kid, I was drawn more to the Metropolitan Museum of Art than to here because my passions then were ancient Egypt and the Middle Ages. My interest in science developed at the University of Michigan where I did my undergraduate and graduate work. I majored in political science and at the same time I was taking a couple of courses from Leslie White, a uh, leading anthropologist at Michigan. And I realized that's what I really liked. I wanted to go to a place where I wouldn't be, let's say, like the sixth anthropologist in a Pueblo village. I wanted some place where there was Aboriginal and nearly untouched cultures. And that meant either Amazonia or New Guinea. But the actual thing that drew me was an article published by, written by a man who was a freelance writer interviewing Kalerva Oberg, an American anthropologist who had worked in the upper Xingu region of central Brazil. I wrote to Oberg and asked him which, which of the other villages did he think were was most ripe for study. And he didn't pick one, but he mentioned several. And sitting in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I was able to pick the very village that I ended up doing field work with. You know that you can't help but influence them. But I tried uh, to influence their culture as little as possible. For example, early in this day, they asked me what happens to the sun after it sets. They didn't have a clear picture. But I didn't want to tell them what, what we thought, what really happens. So I've, I fudged it in some way so as not to affect their, whatever beliefs they did have about this. I've had two interests that I've been, had here and pursued. One was the ethnology of Amazonia, and the other one was cultural evolution, especially political evolution. And I guess what uh, I'm most known for is the theory of the origin of the state. But that theory emerged as a result of my study in Amazonia. I saw the Kwikuru, for example, uh, a simple, autonomous village of 145 people, and the Incas, about a thousand miles to the west, with a large, complex empire. Yet, if you compare the agriculture of the two areas, the Kwikuru produced more food per unit of labor, per unit of time, than the, than the Inca did. And that led to my suggesting reasons why I think that had occurred, and reasons that I think could then be applied to other parts of the world where the state first emerged. I've tried to pursue anthropology as a science, uh, like any other science, applying cause and effect. Uh, what are the cultural phenomena? Why do they come to be as they are? And that's sort of that's the driving passion of, I think, most scientists and what I think has driven me too.